Okay, video number two on induction arguments by analogy. And this is where we decide whether we can compare apples to oranges. So arguments by analogy are logical inferences based on similarity. So for instance, we think of Bill and Ted being alike in height, hair color, age, and taste. And we know that Bill likes expensive wines. Therefore, we infer that Ted will like expensive wines. And let's just pause here and, and think about that arguments, right? So Bill and Ted are alike in height, hair color, age, and taste. Now, how relevant is that to those similarities to wines? Well, the question of taste uh, which is a very general thing, you know, might be about their appreciation for certain architectures or or novels or movies or food. Uh, to say it specifically about wines would be a real stretch. Um, and people's appreciation for wines based on their height or their hair color, well, you know, you might say, well, if it turns out that they're both blonde and tall, then they're probably European and male, maybe, you know, but um, that's, you know, this doesn't seem like a great argument, let's face it. Um, this, you know, like most gifts you give at Christmas time, this one might not work out. The general form of analogy is uh, this form where you have two or more things that are alike in uh, respects. And sometimes there's only one respect, sometimes there's many. Typically speaking, you want more likenesses rather than not. Uh, and then uh, if you have A having a specific property, you infer that B has that specific property or characteristic. So A and B are, basically you're saying A and B are alike in a whole bunch of ways. So here's this new way, they're probably also alike. And an argument that is going to be stronger is one where there's lots of likenesses. And we'd also like somehow for there to be relevance here. We'd sure like it if it turned out that uh, the relevance, but you know, all of these here were somehow relevant to X, right? If P, Q, and R were the very similar to so... Uh, a, you know, this was Bill and Ted are alike in respect that they like, you know, the same kinds of wine, they like the same kinds of food, they like the same kinds of restaurants, and then here's a very specific wine that Bill likes. I think Ted will like it too. That sounds like a really good uh, um, inference, right? Whereas if this was Bill and Ted are alike in respects that they like rodeos, monster trucks, and Donald Trump. Bill likes this wine, therefore Ted will like the wine. Hey. I mean, maybe Ted likes everything. But um, you can see how it's going to matter whether there's, uh, there's, whether the relevance of these similarities are tied into each other. We want to break this down a little bit more. Uh, so we've got all, here's the same basic argument form, and we've got some names for things. So we call the grounds of the analogy the things that are being compared, the basis of the analogy those things that are the similarities, the extension is the new thing. Uh, if you want to get really fancy, call it the objective ob extension in the premise and the problematic extension in the conclusion. It's problematic because it's like, well, you're putting it out there uh, and you're hoping it's true, as you are with uh, all uh, inductive logic, right? You're always going out in a bit of a limp. The color coding system here is that these orange things, having more is better. So that if you had, instead of just being Bill and Ted, you have a long series of people that were alike in a long series of respects. And then you, 
uh, you had this whole group of people has the property, so the single member has the property. Huh. You know, that's going to be stronger than just as two instances. Likewise, I say in my slides, red is less is better, so that the extent to which, and I don't mean less, fewer properties, but rather the extent to which that property is a bit of a stretch, right? So if it is, if this is a lot like the basis, then it's good. If this is really something quite new and exciting and different, your argument's not going to be as strong. So when you hear people say COVID is like the flu, as our good friend Donald Trump said way back in February, it's going to disappear. And his reasoning for that was that it's like the flu, which tends to peak in the winter and go away in the summer. Um, so, you know, let's think about that. You know, is the flu like COVID? Well, uh, there are similarities and there are differences. And, oh, and there's a nice Venn diagram for us. Now we really know how those work, right? So these things are common to both sides. Um, so notice the symptoms, not the same. Uh... Although some of the fever, cough, and fatigue are similar, the, the uh, best way to prevent is different. The complications you're going to get are different. And another important way they're different is how serious they are, right? The hospitalization rate at 2% versus 19% for COVID. A mortality rate or the case fatality rate, they call it, 0.1 or less, versus one somewhere between 1% and 3% for COVID. Well, um, so at least 10 times as deadly. So when someone says it's like the flu, we got to worry about that. Another way uh, that we've been actually using analogies throughout the course is as counterexamples. And so basically when we said, here's a counterexample, we said, here's an argument that has the same form as another argument, right? So these two things, argument A and argument B, are similar in respect of having the same form. Argument A is invalid, that's the new, that's the extension. Therefore, argument B is invalid. And so we're saying our reasoning by analogy um, that uh, an argument that has a counterexample of the same form is not valid. Now, you might be asking, and here's, you know, I'm anticipating objections here. Uh, wait a second, Professor Phil. You said that counterexamples were a form of proof, but this is inductive, and inductive doesn't give us proof, so what the heck? I think, thank you, very wise and, uh, and polite student. Um, excellent question. So, um... I would say that you're right, it is an analogy. Counterexamples are as effective as their similarities are clear. Uh, you will not make an effective counterexample if uh, the you don't have sort of perfect similarity, and if that similarity isn't obvious to the person who you're trying to convince. Um, and so, yeah, it isn't actually perfect. It is a form of proof for those who have training in logic and know what counterexamples are. Um, and probably we can think of the counterexample as maybe the perfect analogy where you're deliberately using this really the only similarity that matters, same logical form. So Argument A is perfectly alike argument B in the only respect in which